Your new Molex Tape Terminal Crimp Module is easy to install, operate, and maintain. This video will guide you and also give you some troubleshooting tips. You can find additional information at molex.com slash application tooling or contact the tooling group at 402-458-8665 or application tooling at molex.com. Let's begin with the setup of your Molex Tape Terminal Crimp Module. The basic requirements for operating the module are a TM3000 or TM4000 press, an air supply of 80 PSI, a compatible die set, and reels of Molex terminals on Mylar tape. Before you install the module, Verify that the press shut height is properly set to 135.8 millimeters or 5.346 inches. If not, disconnect the press from power and adjust it to those specifications using the instructions in section 2.1 of the tape terminal crimp module manual. This will ensure correct terminal crimp compression. Open the press guard and clean the quick change mounting plate of any scrap or chips that may interfere with the module installation. Use a three millimeter hex wrench to remove the locking set screw and loosen the set screw holding the press yoke. Pull the press yoke straight down, remove it from the press, and secure it in the storage hole on the right side of the crimp module frame. Next, Install the press yoke furnished with the crimp module in the press ramp. Tighten the set screw securely and install the locking screw. Mount the tape terminal crimp module in the press yoke. Then lower the module to rest on the base plate. Visually align the crimp module with the locating clamps on the press quick change mounting plate. Now lock the crimp module by turning the M5 socket head screw counterclockwise until tight. Next, connect the supplied 6mm air lines from the feed cylinder to the press air valve. The cylinder port closest to the module frame must be connected to the normally open valve port. The other cylinder port with the flow control valve on it must be connected to the normally closed valve port. This can be verified when the machine is powered up by ensuring the feed arm is retracted, locking the feed wheel from rotating. The Molex TM3000 and TM4000 presses ship with a press guard for industry standard applicator use, but it must be removed when using the Molex tape crimp module and the guard kit supplied with the module must be installed to meet OSHA safety regulations. Instructions for installing other crimp module guard options for different wire sizes can be found on pages 31 through 38 in the Tape Terminal Crimp Module Operation Manual. Once installed, your module setup is complete. With the press power off and the guard open, either ATP 101, 201, or 301 style die sets can be installed in the Tape Terminal Crimp Module. To install an ATP 101 or 301 style die set, first move the RAM to access the punch holder. Make sure the etched E2 or I2 on each punch faces toward the operator. Place the punches against the punch holder. The punch stamped E2 goes against the holder and the punch stamped I2 is stacked on the conductor punch. Tighten the number 10 socket head screw to complete the punch installation. To install the anvils, use a 5 32nd inch hex wrench and repeat the steps you use to install the punches. The ATP 201 style die set installation is similar but differs slightly. Refer to your operation manual for details. Hand cycle the press after installing the punches to ensure a free fit between punch and anvil. You may feel some resistance when the punch and anvil close. If this requires a lot of effort, stop. Check for incorrectly installed punches or anvil misalignment. To align the punches with the anvils, use a 5 seconds inch hex wrench to slightly loosen the anvil mounting screw. Slowly hand cycle the ram of the press to the bottom of its stroke. With the punches engaging the anvils, securely tighten the anvil mounting screw to ensure alignment of punches and anvils. 
If the press shut height was correctly set prior to crimp module installation, there should be no need to adjust conductor crimp height. To test conductor crimp height, use a piece of solder that is approximately 40 millimeters long and approximately 0.5 millimeters larger in diameter than the crimped slug height. With no terminals in the module, lay the solder across the anvils and hand cycle the press. Using a crimp micrometer or dial caliper, measure the solder slug height and compare it to the specification for the die set being used. These are included with the dies when shipped and are also available online at molex.com. If the soft slug measurement doesn't meet the specification, refer to the Tape Terminal Crimp Module Manual Section 2.1 to alter the shot height of the press. With the press disconnected from power, open the machine guard and mount the tape reel on the reel arm of the press, with the printed side of the reel facing the operator. Make sure the tape derails counterclockwise. The tape will be easier to start in the track if the corner of the tape is cleanly trimmed to a point. Open the tape track cover by pulling out the spring-loaded knob and lifting the cover. A hole is provided in the module frame for the knob's pin to enter, holding the cover open. Load the tape terminal strip from the front of the module, engaging the slots in the tape with the teeth on the feed wheel. Pull out the spring-loaded knob and lower the track cover. If terminals aren't present on the mylar tape in the crimping area, cycle the press until the terminal is centered over the crimp anvil. To prevent tape feed jams, the tape should enter the press guard below the bottom horizontal bar. While operating the crimp module, do not allow the tape entering the press to become taut. Occasionally, turn the terminal reel to maintain a slack loop. After crimping, the tape feed will advance the terminal one position to the right. To prevent tape damage, pull the terminal off the tape toward the right. This sideways action makes it easier for the terminal to break free from the adhesive holding it to the tape. If crimped wires are allowed to accumulate on the tape, they will eventually cause a tape feed jam. The scrap tape exits between the right press guard and guide extension. If adjustments are necessary for proper insulation, crimp height, and quality, turn off the press and open the machine guard. Using a 532nd inch hex wrench, loosen the number 10 socket head screw that is holding the punches. Rotate the insulation adjusting cam to achieve the desired insulation height. There are three cam positions marked L, M, and S on the punch holder for large, medium, and small diameter wires. The cam must be in one of the three positions. Do not adjust it between positions. While holding the punches up against the punch holder, securely tighten the number 10 socket head screw. Crimp a wire under power. Inspect the insulation crimp and make further adjustments if needed. There are just a few adjustments that you may need to make as you begin the crimping operation. Terminal feed speed is controlled by the flow control valve on the outermost feed cylinder. The speed is factory adjusted and should not need altering. If you are having feed issues, refer to the troubleshooting section of this video. Some terminals tend to stick in the conductor punch after crimping. Use the terminal stripper to shed the terminal away from the retracting punches. Depending on the size of the terminals being crimped, you may need to adjust the position of the terminal stripper. First, disconnect power from the press and open the machine guard. Manually raise the ram to the full up position. To adjust the stripper in and out, use a four millimeter hex wrench to loosen the M5 socket head screw on the side of the stripper. Move the stripper toward or away from the punches, making sure it does not interfere with the ram stroke. Tighten the M5 socket head screw when the adjustment is complete. To adjust the stripper up and down, loosen the M5 socket head screw on the front of the stripper. Move the stripper down until it is just above the tape terminal on the anvils. Tighten the M5 socket head screw when the adjustment is complete. If the terminals being crimped do not have an internal wire stop tab, such as larger ring terminals, you will need to use the module's wire stop. Loosen the M5 socket head screw on the side of the stripper 
and move the wire stop in or out until it is near the end of the terminal barrel. Then, re-tighten the M5 socket head screw. Your Molex tape terminal crimp module requires very little maintenance to operate efficiently. The module and press should be cleaned daily and all moving surfaces should be lubricated. On a regular basis, inspect the die sets for signs of wear. For specific maintenance details, refer to your tape terminal crimp module operation manual. We have identified some of the most common problems if your crimping operation is not giving specified results. Before you make any adjustments to your press or crimp module, refer to the application tooling specification and manual to verify that the terminal, wire, and tooling are compatible. If your crimp terminals are failing the pull force test, check to see if the crimp dies are failing to bottom out or if they are worn. It could be that the wrong dies were installed or there is an incorrect die arrangement. You should also check to see if the tape mounting is incorrect. What if the terminal mounting is breaking on the tape or the tape is tearing? The feed speed may be too fast for the terminals, especially if you are crimping larger products such as permaseals or BCLs. To adjust speed, loosen the locking ring on the flow control valve on the feed cylinder and then turn the adjustment knob clockwise to reduce the feed speed or counterclockwise to increase the feed speed. Adjustments to the feed speed should be made gradually. When adjustment is complete, turn the locking ring until it is finger tight. If there is a failure to feed the tape into the crimp module, check to see if you have sufficient 80 PSI air pressure. There may also be a debris buildup on the feed wheel. You may also run into this situation if the feed speed is reduced significantly and the double index is required. In that case, the feed stroke may not fully complete. A final reminder, if you still have installation, operating, maintenance, or troubleshooting questions after viewing this video, you can find additional information at molex.com slash application tooling or by calling the tooling group at 402 458 8665 or by emailing us at applicationtooling at molex.com.